Guns are an essential part of Rust. They're mandatory for effective mid and late game PvP, as well as protecting yourself from other players. But for many beginners, finding even one gun is a challenge. So where exactly do you find guns in Rust? Well, in this video I'll go through where and how to get guns in Rust, which monuments and methods have the highest spawn chance, and which methods I personally go for. This video includes the newest versions of the monuments and their spawn rates and the information in this video is applicable for both PC and console versions of Rust. Similar to my other Rust videos, this video is divided into 7 different sections and you can find the timestamps for each segment in the description down below or on the screen now. Finally, if you happen to learn something or enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like or subscribing as it really helps out the channel and I enjoy the dopamine of seeing the number go up. Now onto the video. First, let's start off with the different types of crates where guns can spawn so that you know what you're looking for. In Rust, there are three different crates that can spawn guns and they are the regular crates, military crates, and elite crates. These different crate types, of course, have different guns in them and consequently different spawn chances. Regular crates have a 3% gun spawn rate, military crates have a 6% gun spawn rate, and elite crates have a 28% gun spawn rate. There are other containers that can spawn guns, but they're much rarer and unique and I'll cover them later in the video. Starting off, we'll begin with the no-tier monuments. First, there's the abandoned cabins with a 6% chance of spawning guns. Next, the lighthouse has three possible crate spawns, so you have a 9% chance of getting at least one gun. The mining outpost, while it may seem full of crates, you only have a 17% chance of finding a gun there. The newly updated junkyard has an 18% chance of spawning guns. It's called a junkyard for a reason. Oxum's gas station is a good early game monument as it has three regular crates in addition to two military crates. You have a 19% chance of finding a gun there. Similar to Oxum's, the supermarket, also known as the sperm kit, is a great early game monument. It has four regular crates and two military crates. You have a 22% chance of finding a gun. Finally for this section we have the tunnel stations. Since the tunnels go under the entire map, it would be ridiculous to calculate the percentages for all the stations, therefore I'll only calculate one station's percentage. One station has a 35% chance of spawning guns. Now onto the tier 1 monuments. Satellite Dish is the worst in this section, with a 14% chance if you don't do the keycard puzzle, and a 19% chance if you do. Small Harbor is a tiny bit better here with a 15% chance without the puzzle and a 22% chance with. Large Harbor is better if you don't do the puzzle, 22% chance. If you do do the puzzle, 26% chance. A very good tier 1 monument, the dome has a 35% chance of spawning a gun in one of its 10 total crates. Finally, the best tier 1 monument is the sewer branch. Without doing the puzzle, you have a 30% chance and a 50% chance of finding a gun if you do do the puzzle. Next we have the tier 2 monuments, also known as blue card monuments. Starting off we have power plant with a 38% chance of finding a gun without doing the puzzle and a 55% chance if you do do the puzzle. After that there's the airfield with a 45% chance if you don't do the puzzle and a 61% chance if you do. Next we have Water Treatment with a 54% chance without the puzzle and a 64% chance with. Finally, and a personal favorite of mine, the Train Yard has a 49% chance of spawning guns if you don't do the puzzle and a 68% chance if you do. Lastly we have the Tier 3 Monuments. The Launch Site, home to the Bradley APC, has a 70% chance of spawning a weapon without doing the puzzle and a 92% chance if you do. 
Guarded by dozens of AI scientists, the military tunnels are your best bet of finding guns. Not only can each scientist drop a gun, there's also 7 elite crates total. You have an 88% chance of finding a gun if you don't do the puzzle, and a 98% chance if you do. Now for the special monuments. The small and large oil rigs are offshore monuments on top of which are locked crates protected by armed AI scientists. Uh, if you'd like to see how to do small oil rig, I made a guide on it which you can find in the top right corner now. Anyway, there's only one locked crate here, however there are also scientists and different types of crates which can spawn guns. The overall probability of getting at least one gun from small and large oil rigs is 100% chance, with a 96% chance of getting a second one. The giant excavator is a monument that sometimes spawns on the island and is guarded by a number of armed scientists. However, despite this, it only has a 4% chance of spawning guns, so I wouldn't recommend it. The attack heli, also known as the patrol heli, occasionally comes to patrol over the island. If you shoot it down, it'll drop 4 helicopter crates. Combined, they have a gun spawn rate of 50%. However, I wouldn't recommend trying this method since it's very difficult for newer players, and more experienced Rust players will usually come to counter the wreckage. The Chinook helicopter sometimes flies over the island to drop a locked crate at different monuments, like Water Treatment and Dome, just to name a couple. The locked crate itself has a 100% chance of having at least one gun, but usually has two to three. The cargo ship is an event which involves a cargo ship sailing around the island. It carries three locked crates as well as a number of regular, military, and elite crates. Overall, you're guaranteed of at least getting three guns, and a 92% chance of getting more. Every once in a while, a cargo plane will drop a supply drop somewhere on the island. Quick note by the way, supply drops can be summoned by players by throwing down supply beacons. Each supply drop has one guaranteed gun and a 67% chance of having more. You may find that large groups of players will actually be selling guns in player shops. They usually sell them for sulfur or scrap, so if you want to farm a little bit, I'd say that just buying a gun from a player shop is generally a good idea. This is possibly the most straightforward way to get a gun. Just eliminate other players who already found guns. That way you don't have to deal with doing monuments and looting crates. If you hear shots, go towards them. And obviously a bow versus a gun isn't a fair fight, so I'd recommend trying to grub a fight. That means using lower tier weapons like compound bows to kill highly geared players that already have guns. If you start a bit later into the wipe, there's a good chance that there will be a few decaying bases that have guns inside. I recommend checking them out, you never know what you may find in those. Safe zones such as the outpost and bandit camp actually sell guns for scrap. The outpost sells revolvers and double barrels, and the bandit camp sells slightly better guns like LRs, M39s, and M92s. If you find that you're sitting on a bunch of scrap, you can also use the tech tree inside your workbench to get guns. All you have to do is open the workbench and research the particular branch that leads to a gun. The Bradley APC tank, as we mentioned before, is the tank that guards the launch site. If you manage to take it out, it'll drop three APC crates. There's a 56% chance of getting at least one gun from Bradley. Once you actually get a gun, you'll have to research it so that you can craft it later. Depending on the gun, it can cost anywhere between 75 and 500 scrap. Keep in mind that the military grade weapons such as M92s and LRs cannot be researched. To research a gun, go to your research table, throw the gun and the scrap in there, and after a few seconds, you'll get a blueprint for that gun. After you've researched the gun that you found, you have to craft it, and to do that you need specific components. The components that are usually needed to craft guns are springs, SAR bodies, SMG bodies, and rifle bodies. However, the materials and the amounts vary entirely on what gun you're making. So to be absolutely certain of what components you need, just check the crafting requirements in the crafting menu. 
Personally, my favorite methods of getting guns are by looting decayed bases, through PvP, and by doing train yard and sewer branch a couple of times. I find that these options are the simplest and most effective for me and my playstyle. But then again, that's just my playstyle and how I enjoy playing. If you really have no idea where to start, I'd recommend just buying a gun from a player shop. If there aren't any player shops, the dome is a good place to go since it has a good spawn chance for a monument with no puzzle. Now for the math part of the video, I'll make it fast. First, I calculated the probability of getting at least one gun from each crate. Then, I went around all the monuments in Rust and counted how many of each type of crate there was. I then multiplied the number of crates with their corresponding probability to find the probability of getting at least one gun from that specific crate. I then multiplied the probabilities of all the crates from one monument together to find the probability with and without doing the puzzle, therefore giving me the total probability of getting at least one gun from each monument. Lastly, just to be sure, I ran some monuments a few times to find if the experimental probability matched my theoretical probability. If you want to be more depressed than you already will be from playing Rust, I've attached a link to the Google spreadsheet in the description. Finally, I'd like to thank my homie Alex, who is exceptionally smarter than me and who stayed up to 3 in the morning helping me figure out all of this shit. So thank you, Alex. Well gamers, that's the end of this video. Apologies for taking so long to upload this one, but math sucks ass and I'm not the brightest tool in the shed. Anyway, if you enjoyed or learned something from this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. If you have any feedback or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments section. I've been streaming on Twitch recently, so if you're interested, the link for that is in the description. Also, I have a Discord server which you can join. I post announcements, memes, and other stuff in there, so... I don't know, I'd say it's pretty worth it. That's all from me boys, I hope you have a wonderful day and do not fucking shoot yourself.